I want to share a clip that Case Study QB posted to Twitter. Without Case Study QB, I probably wouldn't know about half of these clips that I find. So shout out to them. Definitely give them a follow. Uh, this features the uh, crying billionaire, Leon Cooperman. This is the individual who literally on national television cried at the idea of the wealth tax. Mind you, the wealth tax has absolutely no chance of passing in the short-term future. But the mere idea that politicians would institute a tax on wealth brought him to tears. And this individual, uh, you can understand why it affects him personally, because he is worth an estimated $2.5 billion. So when people criticize you know, the rich and they talk about taxing the rich and eating the rich, he takes it personally. So in a new clip on CNBC, he wanted to denounce the hatred and vitriol spewed toward elites. And he says a lot of very stupid things that uh, that show why nobody should take rich people seriously. I think he's the poster boy as to why we shouldn't take anything that someone uh, this wealthy has to say uh, because they're, they're not serious. Like the arguments that he's making aren't actually valid arguments. What we see from him, it's little more than platitudes. And even to say that is to be overly charitable. But take a look and then we're going to destroy what he has to say. Very quickly about share buybacks. That was another issue we, we got into with Senator Warren yesterday. You yeah, have a problem with share no buybacks? Should the government restrict them? She has no idea what she's talking about. You know, sure, there are, buybacks should be evaluated like, as a management decision like any other capital allocation decision. You go out and you buy another company. You go out and you spend money on plant and equipment. You pay a dividend. You know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an, a decision made by management, and it has to be evaluated. You know, I learned a lot about buybacks by watching Dr. Henry Singleton operate. He was a, a brilliant, brilliant executive. Okay, and he did eight self-tender offers from 1972 to 1984, retired 90% of his stock, never selling a share of his own stock. I hate buybacks where managements are buying back a lot of stock and selling into the buyback. He never sold a share of his stock. He died uh, as the second largest uh, owner of land in America next to Ted Turner. He became a multi-billionaire because of his wise decisions. Okay, he created a tremendous amount of wealth for shareholders. When the shareholders cash in their stock, they pay taxes to the government. Okay, we don't need the government. The government is not proven to be a great allocator of capital. We don't need artificial decision making. We just let the let the invisible hand of capitalism work. We have the greatest economy in the world. The, the thing that I fear most is the young people in this country are embracing socialism, and not and not understanding that we have one of the most effectively working economies in the world. Okay. And we should not look to make radical changes. We can make changes around the edge. We could do a better job, no question about it. I have no problem with raising taxes. I have no uh, problem with eliminating loopholes. You know, let's, we've talked about carried interest for a decade on this program. Nothing has been done. It should be taxed as ordinary income. Okay. It's as simple as that. We don't need a new regime. It's not wise. It will lead to un, uh, uh, economic decision making. And I think Tillman Fatia did an excellent job yesterday on one of your segments in discussing his views and explaining the problems, which I could go through, but not necessary to repeat what he had to say because he did a very good job of, of, of disclosing it. You know, hey, I, we, hey, don't, we don't have to do it. It's just it's a soundbite. It's a soundbite. There's no reason to be hostile to wealth, whether it's AOC, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren. There's no reason to be hostile or wealth. We all have to work together to deal with our problems. Right. As simple as that. And you got to decide whether you're a capitalist or whether you're a socialist. Socialist. Hands down. Definitely socialist. This argument is really, really terrible. He says, uh, there's no reason to be hostile towards wealth. Now, for him, of course, we can understand why he doesn't want people to to be hostile towards wealth because he has a lot of wealth. But you see, the issue is it's not just that you have a lot of wealth and we're jealous. The issue is that you and your rich buddies hoard most of the wealth and you're still not satisfied. You're still trying to further rig the rules in your favor so you can increase the wealth that you already have. While the peasants have crumbs, you're trying to lobby the government for even more more tax breaks. He says that he, you know, isn't against raising taxes. Well, I mean, maybe spread the word amongst your rich friends that when you continuously lobby for the tax burden to be shifted even more to the working class, 
that is going to absolutely drive more hatred and vitriol towards elites. And furthermore, what drives hostility, which is warranted towards elites, is when we even get a small victory or discuss the codification of a small victory with regard to workers' rights, such as the $15 an hour minimum wage, which is now in jeopardy, immediately all of corporate America gears up to try to lobby against it. So any progress that we make, you fight against. All of the wealth in this country, you have. You own the means of production. So we have every reason in the world to be hostile towards wealth and not just hostile towards the institutions and the system that allows for you know these levels of obscene wealth, but hostile towards the individuals such as Leon Cooperman who perpetuate this system by propping it up, by arguing for this very system. And I love uh, what he said because he really shared why he's uh, chosen to uh, speak out. The thing that I fear most is that young people in this country are embracing socialism, not understanding that we have one of the most effectively working economies in the world. If that were the case, though, wouldn't these young people be more inclined to support capitalism if it benefited them in any way whatsoever? I mean, we are burdened with debt. This generation is not buying cars, not buying houses, not having uh, children in comparison with um, you know previous generations. Maybe if they actually were able to reap some of the rewards of capitalism, they wouldn't be as receptive to socialist arguments. But because you idiots are so fucking greedy, even giving them a little bit more than crumbs is beyond the pale because you've got to have it all. And you wonder why young people are taking a liking to socialism. Hmm. Maybe it's because capitalism has been a failure. Maybe because capitalism has only served people like you. And I love when he threw in the classic line of, let the invisible hand of capitalism work. The problem is that capitalism is an inherently volatile system. It doesn't work. Without intervention from the government, what now seems like every couple of decades... It doesn't work. It collapses. And he says that, like, let's just let capitalism do its thing. But the second one of his companies, whatever he does to get that wealth, the second it's convenient, he'd be begging for a government handout. He'd be begging for socialism for large multinational corporations because this is how capitalism works. The system requires management from government. Capitalists will argue that, you know, they don't need any regulation. They don't need the government to interfere. But the minute that it's convenient, the minute that they collapse, the minute Wall Street engages in reckless behavior, well, they're crying for a bailout. So functionally, what he's arguing for is corporate authoritarianism, where uh, large multinational corporations and their executives have the utmost freedom in this capitalist society. But the peasants have to shut the fuck up and accept their crumbs. And if you even speak out and be a little bit angry, he's going to cry. But he says, uh, we all have to work together. I love that platitude. We all have to work together. Except that's not happening. Working together would imply that in this capitalist system, uh, both the workers, the employees, and the employers have an equal seat at the table, have an equal say in the policymaking process. But that's not happening. That's why uh, we are seeing the laws being written to the benefit of these corporations and to the detriment of their workers. You see, there's a reason why policy outcomes reflect what special interests and elites want and why normal, ordinary citizens have a statistically insignificant impact on policy outcomes. This is according to a 2014 Princeton University study by Drs. Gillens and Page. It's because we're not working together. Corporations haven't just exploited their workers, but they have corrupted democracy. So you wonder why young people aren't really liking capitalism as it stands now? Well, it's because, like, it's not working for them. So of course, of course. They fucking hate capitalism. Who wouldn't? Leon Cooperman would fucking hate capitalism if he found himself on the opposite end of the economic spectrum. But he's on the very tippy top, so it's really easy for him to look down on the peasants from his ivory tower and denounce all of the hatred that he sees, the discrimination that he sees towards the rich. But guess what? Fuck elites like Leon Cooperman. Any hatred and vitriol towards elites... And the system itself isn't just uh, deserved. 
but it is necessary. Because if you don't feel pressure, then that means that we're not speaking out enough. So I absolutely love to see this fucking capitalist pig squeal. Keep crying, bitch, because we're not backing down anytime soon. You've had your heyday. The capitalists have created the dystopian society that we're all living in now. So at a minimum, you should be happy that we're just speaking out against it and not coming with our fucking pitchforks. Beta male, not a beta male.